I'm not a little person. It could be dangerous. Hey guys, Johnny Nerd out here. Got another custom e-bike build for you. This one, I've got a lot of requests about this style, the drop bar style. Lots of interesting things to do if you're thinking about doing a drop bar bike. I'm gonna go into the things that you're gonna need to do if you're thinking about doing a drop bar bike because it's not the same kind of install as a normal bike. Guys, if you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerdout. I convert bikes into e-bikes. So I'm gonna go over what I did here. If you are if you like this type of stuff, check out my website, johnnynerdout.com. I got all the different components, specialty tools, specialty parts you're gonna need there. If you have questions, message me there. If, you, if you're building an e-bike and you're stuck and you're just like, what am I doing? I can help you. Book a consultation with me on there. I could do a video call with you. I could walk you through these issues. Chances are I've been through it and I know how to help you get out of it. Okay, but that being said, this is a Cannondale. Cannondale road bike. This is a fast bike. This is super lightweight. It's just, even with the motor and battery on here, this is the battery in here. Motor's down there. I don't know, this thing probably still weighs about 30 pounds maybe. I'd say it's about 25, 30 pounds right now. I wish I had my scale on me. I should have measured it. 25, 30 pounds, I'd say this whole setup weighs. This customer um, wanted to keep this thing very lightweight. She was very concerned about keeping it lightweight, very minimal, very inconspicuous. She didn't want, you know, big, bulky. She didn't want it to look like an e-bike. I think we, I think we accomplished that pretty well. Obviously, you could see the cable running here. That's pretty much the only giveaway. You could see a, a little bit of cableage here as well, but you know, you could only do so much. Okay, so let's get right into it. Battery, it's a 52 volt, 6.7 amp hour battery. It's inside here. Little hand grenade there. Motor is the Bafang BDS02 750 watt motor. Display, we went with the SW102. Super small, it's the exact same thing as the Egg Rider, except it doesn't have Bluetooth capability to your phone that you could program it and do all that stuff. But it's the same physical display, so it's super small and slim. Um, we got the thumb throttle here. You can see we had to put a little adapter here that kind of turns the throttle to a right angle so that you could access it from here. Because these drop bars kind of make it a little, make it a lot, a lot harder to mount stuff here. So we had to put an adapter on there to mount it, turn it. 90 degrees. With the chain ring, we went with the Lecky 42 tooth. And the stock chain ring, it just kept jumping off when it was in the lowest gear because that chain line was just too much. But the, with these Leckies, they really take care of almost all of those problems with chain line issues. They grab onto that chain so good that it just, you never really have an issue with it. So we put a 42 tooth Lecky on there. So it's still gonna be good for cruising. You're not gonna be pedaling, winding out and looking like a cartoon character running down the, going down the street. Put a gear shift sensor in it right here. And then for brake cutoffs, you can't put standard brake cutoffs on here because normal brake cutoffs have are the built-in levers in them. You can't do that here. So for that, I put in inline brake cutoffs here. So they're just kind of universals. So you just put those in line with this and then it senses when you're, when that, when that, cable is moving and it cuts off the power. I put one here and I put one uh, right here on the other side. So I got two of them so they both of them still work. Um, so we did lose, this still has the shifter for the front derailleur. It's just kind of dummy now. It's just sitting there and it's not doing anything. But brakes still work and everything looks, I think it looks pretty good. I'm not gonna do a Johnny Nerd Out test on this because this bike is way too small. This is for a little petite lady. Plain and simple, it's unsafe for me to be riding it and doing a top speed test on this. As much as I wanted to, I was like, I can't wait to see how fast this thing goes. I bet you this thing's gonna crack 40 miles an hour, which I bet it would. Just on, thro just on throttle, without me even pedaling, I bet this thing would crack 40 miles an hour. But for me riding it, man, it's, I, it looks, it's just weird because this is for a little person. I'm not a little person. It could be dangerous. That's why it's really important to size a bike correctly. I didn't want to make like a, you know, crash test dummy video on me getting hurt and then saying, that's why you shouldn't do it. So unfortunately, I know you guys are like, do it. I would estimate this thing to be at least 38 miles per hour. This thing would just fly. These, these tires are like ice skates. They just glide. Feel free to ask me any questions about this build if you're thinking about doing a drop bar bike yourself. Installation was pretty straightforward. 
except you know you just got to have a couple little adapters here and there it's totally doable and hopefully this this helped you guys out another option to not putting it on here is could have just put a saddle bag underneath the seat which is probably what i would have done personally but they already had this and was like let's just use it so cool all right thanks guys